Hello everyone, got a few dirty jokes for you today. So three friends decided to bet each other $100 on who could make their wives scream the most. They all went home to try their best. The first friend said, I made love to my wife for two hours and she was screaming for at least one and a half hours. The second friend countered, that's nothing. I made love to my wife for two hours, and she was screaming the whole time and a half hour after that. Then the third friend said, that's pathetic. I made love to my wife for ten minutes and wiped my thing on the curtain, and she's still screaming. <laughs> so a crusty old man walks into the local Catholic church and says to the secretary, I would like to join this damn church. The astonished woman replies, I beg your pardon, sir. I must have misunderstood you. What did you say? Listen up, damn it. I said I want to join this damn church. I'm very sorry, sir, but that kind of language is not tolerated in this church. The secretary leaves her desk and goes into the priest's study to inform him of her situation. The priest agrees that the secretary does not have to listen to that foul language. They both return to her office, and the priest asks the old geezer, Sir, what seems to be the problem here? There is no damn problem, the man says. I just won twenty million dollars in the damn lottery, and I want to join this damn church to get rid of some of this damn money. I see, said the priest. And is this damn woman giving you a hard time? <laughs> so women always say that giving birth is way more painful than a guy getting kicked in the nuts. Here is proof that they are wrong. A year or so after giving birth, a woman will often say, it'd be nice to have another baby. You never hear a bloke say, I wouldn't mind another kick in the nuts. Case closed. <laughs> so a young boy came home from school to his mother. She asked him how his bus ride in with his father was. It was fine, mum, he chirped. A nice lady got on, and there were no seats left, so he told me to give up my seat so she could sit down. The mum beamed proudly. Well, you've done the right thing. He looked up at her with a smile and said, But mom, I was sitting on daddy's lap. <laughs> so a Jewish woman wants to take her dog to Israel. So she goes to the travel agent to find out how. He says, it's easy. You go to the airline. They give you a kennel. You put your dog in it. When you get off at Tel Aviv, go to the luggage rack and there's your dog. So she does. Gets off at Tel Aviv, goes to the luggage rack. No dog. She goes to the lost and found, says, where's my dog? They look all over the airport for it and find the dog in another terminal. Only the dog is dead. Oh my gosh, they say. We killed this woman's dog. What are we going to do? Then one says, wait a minute, it's a cocker spaniel. They're common dogs. There's a pet shop across the street from the airport. We'll get the same size, shape, color, sex. She'll never know the difference. They bring the woman the other dog, and she says, that's not my dog. Laughingly and making light of it, they say, what do you mean that's not your dog? And she says, my dog's dead. I was taking it to Israel to bury it. <laughs> so one day, the phone rings, and the lady of the house, Mrs. Sanders, answers with a cheerful hello. Mrs. Sanders, please, the voice on the other end requests. Speaking, Mrs. Sanders replies with a hint of curiosity. This is Dr. Jones calling from St. Agnes Hospital Laboratory, the voice continues. When your husband's doctor sent his biopsy to the lab last week, a quirky mix-up occurred. We received a biopsy from another Mr. Sanders as well. Now, we're in a bit of a pickle, 
and we're not entirely sure which one belongs to your husband. Regardless, the news isn't too peachy. A nervous Mrs. Sanders inquires. What do you mean? Well, says Dr. Jones, one of the specimens tested positive for Alzheimer's, and the other one tested positive for HIV. That is, we can't distinguish which is which. Mrs. Sanders, now on edge, asks, that's dreadful. Can't you just redo the tests? Normally, we could, but here's the kicker. Medicare will only foot the bill for these expensive tests once, Dr. Jones explains. Panic sets in as Mrs. Sanders frets. What am I supposed to do now? The doctor recommends her a solution saying, drop your husband off somewhere in the middle of town. If he finds his way home, don't sleep with him. <laughs> so Tony had just finished reading a new book titled, You Can Be the Man of Your House. He stormed to his wife in the kitchen and announced, From now on, you need to know that I am the man of this house, and my word is law. You will prepare me a gourmet meal tonight, and when I'm finished eating my meal, you will serve me a sumptuous dessert. After dinner, you are going to go upstairs with me, and we will have the kind of love that I want. Afterward, you are going to draw me a bath so I can relax. You will wash my back and towel me dry and bring me my robe. Then you will massage my feet and hands. Then tomorrow, guess who's going to dress me and comb my hair? His Sicilian wife, Gina, replied, the damn funeral director would be my first guess. <laughs> So upon hearing that her elderly grandfather had just passed away, Katie went straight to her grandparents' house to visit her 95-year-old grandmother and comfort her. When she asked how her grandfather had died, her grandmother replied, He had a heart attack while we were making love on Sunday morning. Horrified, Katie told her grandmother that two people nearly 100 years old making love would surely be asking for trouble. Oh no, my dear, replied Granny. Many years ago, realizing our advanced age, we figured out the best time to do it was when the church bells would start to ring. It was just the right rhythm. Nice and slow and even. Nothing too strenuous. Simply in on the ding and out on the dong. She paused to wipe away a tear and continued, He'd still be alive if the ice cream truck hadn't come along. <laughs> so I was in a public toilet and had just sat down when I heard a voice from the next cubicle. He said, Hi, how are you? Embarrassed, I said. I'm doing fine. The voice said, So what are you up to? I said, just doing the same as you, sitting here. From next door, can I come over? Annoyed, I said, rather busy right now. The voice said, listen, I will have to call you back. There's an idiot next door answering all my questions. <laughs> so Thursday night, I gradually woke up stiff as a plank in a hospital. Tubes up my nose and down my throat. Wires monitoring every function and all around my head. Hell of a pain over my left ear and a gorgeous nurse hovering over me. It was obvious I'd been in a serious accident. She looked deep and steady and I heard her slowly say, You may not feel anything from the waist down. I managed to mumble in reply, Can I feel your melons then? <laughs> Hmm. <laughs>